Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at Notchua's updated classic. This is the Notchua NH-L9A for AM4 processors, now in the beautiful Chromax Black. And for those of you that want a little bit more power out of your cooler and have got a little bit more headroom for fan size, then we've also got the Notchua NF-A9 PWM black fan to add to the mix. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at these two beauties. This is the NH-L9A AM4 and also the Noctua NF-A9 PWM Chromax Black Swap. Please, please, Noctua, can we have some smaller part numbers? I beg you. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get on with it. So essentially today's video, we're looking at this cooler mainly. This is the, uh, the star of the show, so to speak, and this is for your ITX build, so like me with this Inwin B1 case, we've got a, a relatively shallow depth there, so there's not a lot of coolers we can put in there. You can just about get away with the stock AMD cooler, but anything more than that, it starts to get a little bit dicey and gets a little bit close to the glass top. And this is the case for most ITX chassis, especially the small form factor ones that maybe go under a TV or go into some sort of media rack, that kind of thing. So if you're uh, looking for slim and lightweight, but also looking for power, then Noctua is pretty much the way to go, and it has been that way for about 10 years now. This particular style, the NHL style, has been synonymous with small form factor builds for ages now, and obviously a lot of people didn't like the beige and the brown, which is totally understandable if you've got a showpiece PC and you want it to really look nice, the last thing you want is the uh, yeah the beige and brown. So they've updated it to the Chromax black version now. Now this is the LHL9A, the AM4 version, there are other versions available and you can actually get the mounting bracket adapters so you can actually transfer this to a Intel system and vice versa if you buy the Intel version you can buy the extra brackets. There is also a version I believe which combines the best of both but you do pay a little bit extra for it. So anyway that's that out of the way. So moving across to our upgrade fan. Now this is the Noctua NF-A9 PWM. This is the Chromax Black Swap Edition. So as pretty much most of you are aware by now but I'll go over it for those that don't. The Chromax black swap, the swap bit basically means you can change the coloured mountings in this top corner. So included in the box, you get mountings for red, blue, black, green, white, and yellow. So if you uh, want a little bit more bling in your build and maybe want an accent colour, you can use those rubber dampeners for both dual purposes, to reduce vibrations and also to, well, look nice. So we'll be doing unboxings on both of these today and also we'll be doing some testing. We've currently got a cooler in our Inwin B1 but we're going to be taking that. That is in a moment the best of the best from what we've tested. So we're going to replace it with this, the Noctua L9A and see how it does. And then we'll add the upgrade cooler on after just to see if there's much difference in cooling performance and also noise levels. So let's start first of all with the main cooler itself. So yep, yeah, this is the Noctua NH L9A AM4 Chromax Black. That's a lot of words. Anyway, packaging wise, uh, yeah, this is their updated packaging, which actually I quite like. The uh, the older packaging kind of resonated on the beige and brown, but they couldn't resist it and they stuck a little bit of brown on the side. So anyway, we're getting there. We're making progress with this. So it is a 37 mil low profile cooler with 100% RAM compatibility and 100% capacity with PCI Express cards. So if you've got a ITX board and it's absolutely tiny, you're guaranteed that this fits into the AMD profile. So what that basically means is the boffins worked out what size cooler can fit in there without disrupting the rest of your build, essentially. So 100% compatibility for both RAM and GPU. So you've got no issues with your ITX builds, which is awesome. Obviously, if you want to, you can use this with a regular ATX or a micro ATX case and motherboard if you want to. There's no reason why you shouldn't do. But obviously, if you've got a little bit more flexibility and a bit more depth, then certainly there are other Noctua coolers which would do the job much better and possibly cost a little bit less. Now talking of price at the moment, this retails for around about 50 pounds here in the UK, which again, as always, is not a uh, inexpensive cooler by any means, but certainly is the Noctua brand, Noctua quality, Noctua, yeah, it's Noctua. Essentially, you pay a lot of money, but you get a decent cooler. And also included, you get that six year warranty, which is obviously awesome. So as I said, this obviously carries on from the award-winning designs of the original NHL coolers, 
and it's just updated. There are a few minor tweaks to the actual fan and the fan blades and the actual surround itself to make things a little bit better. And they've added a couple of little extra things to make mounting the other fans in the range a little bit easier. So onto the back of the box, again, we go into things like specification and basically they're blowing their own trumpet again and talking about all the cool features, which we'll put on screen now so you can check those out for yourself. But essentially, this one is a given. It fits on pretty much everything. I don't think I've ever seen anyone ever buy one of these or gone to an Amazon review and say it didn't fit, sent back. It just doesn't happen. And the Amazon reviews of this are absolutely stellar, at least four and a half stars out of five. So, well, there's always one person there. On the side of the box, we've got some specifications. Again, I'll put that on the screen now so you can check out in more detail. And if you need to, press pause to take in the information. I will as well put links in the video description so you can check out all the information on the website as well for Noctua. And I will put some of it actually in the video description as well, just for those of you who can't be bored to click on the link. So that's pretty much it for the packaging. Let's take a look and see what we actually get for our 50 hard earned pounds. So we get a actually pretty stellar package. That actually does look the real deal. There's a lot of things you get in life where you open the package and you're like, oh, right, okay, so they're just throwing that in there. But clearly, someone at Not Sure has kind of sat down and designed this and thought, yeah, well, that would look nice there. This is like Apple level presentation. It really is. So in the top section, we get our dear customer, welcome to Noctua and thank you for purchasing our products, which uh, we'll leave that where it is for now. You also get your Noctua case badge, which uh, you get with pretty much all Noctua products these days. You get a tube of Noctua thermal paste, which is always nice to have. We've got the cooler here stuck in the middle. And we've also got our mounting hardware there, which is actually very, very limited on this particular edition. Literally, it's a case of four screws and a back plate, which uh, we'll see shortly. On this side here is a reducer, so you can put that onto the PWM connection, and this will actually lower the fan speeds, etc., and also the noise. So if you have a system where you really, really don't want the fans to be heard at all, then you can use that reducer to get the noise and the RPMs down. Although this thing is pretty darn quiet. So you can put out the top foam, and uh, yeah, basically everything is in there, so nice and easy to organize. And you can take a little closer look at the low noise adapter which is uh, pretty cool, getting PWM both ends. So you just plug that in and it essentially reduces the voltage to nine volts rather than 12 volts. Simple stuff, but very effective. So we've got the cooler itself. Uh, we'll take a closer look at that in a second. We'll just go through the rest of the packaging. So also included is the M4 backplate, which uh, has been specially designed. And also one side is satin matte black. On the other side, you've got a protective piece of plastic there. So that is to protect the motherboard against shorting out. So it doesn't have metal to metal contact, which is great to see. Although I am slightly hesitant. I don't like this mounting mechanism. I'll be completely upfront and honest. For me, the whole mounting system for this particular style of cooler is, uh, well, it's not the easiest. Essentially, it means unless you've got an opening at the back of the motherboard to actually get access to that back plate, you're removing the entire motherboard, which means basically probably removing everything on it, such as your IO connections, your USBs, power, etc., etc. So it's not the easiest of coolers to install. So it's not one of those things where you can quickly install and whip it off, put something else on and swap it in and out. It isn't designed for that. It's designed to be installed and pretty much left in place for the lifetime of the PC. What else do we get in here? So we get some longer screws. And again, that comes into effect when you install the Chromax swap fan. So if you go from the smaller fan, which I think is about 12, maybe 13 millimeters up to this one, which is 25 mil, then those longer screws will be necessary to attach the fan to the cooler. But we'll see that a little bit later on. So let's take a closer look at the cooler itself. So as you can see, it is a very, very small form factor. Very, very tiny. And uh, I'll put up some B-roll so you can see a comparison between this and a stock AM4 cooler. Although it's not an entirely stock one, it's from a Ryzen 7 1700. So you get a general idea. It's not quite the stealth one, but still, this is absolutely tiny and essentially will fit into pretty much any chassis. Even a 1U, it will go into quite easily. The fan itself, as you can see, that's a 92 mil fan on there for those of you who are interested. And yeah, not the biggest fan, obviously. Most of us are used to 120 mil fans, but again, because we're looking at that smaller ITX form factor, then you do have to make some adjustments. Now, obviously, because of the AM4 mounting section and also the capacity or compatibility with things like RAM and graphics cards, it does need to be within a certain tolerance, and this fits in with that perfectly. There are actually two heat pipes running through the entirety of the cooler, which is a good thing to see. 
and it actually is pretty weighty. There's a lot of weight there. You have got a rather large nickel plated copper base plate. So that is gonna transfer your heat away and it's been machined relatively well. You can see there's some machine marks on there. So if you wanted to, if you're really going out to town on this, you could polish that up or buff it a little bit to get it absolutely mirror smooth, but it's actually not too bad at all. Also as well, you can see where the screw holes are, the mounting section there. So if you do want to change this out to install it on an Intel cooler, you can do undo those two screws there and you can get the replacement brackets from Noctua. Again, I'll put links in the video description for all that kind of stuff. But essentially that is pretty much it. It's a very, very nicely finished, all in this kind of satin matte black finish. The actual, the paintwork on the metal itself is very, very matching actually to the fan. So it does look very stealthy indeed. And this is actually part of Project Stealth Mini, which uh, is gonna be a bit of an ongoing project for our little mini ITX build. Looking again at the bracket, so you've got the four mounting sections there. So essentially what we're doing is, we have the back plate on the back of the motherboard, goes through, and then you put your four screws through. So the screws actually screw into the cooler rather than you screwing the cooler into the motherboard. I would have much rather have seen maybe some way of them having some small holes in the cooler or a fin stack so you can actually screw down through, which I think would make installation a lot easier and possibly even using the stock AM4 backplate. But again, it is what it is and obviously they designed it for a particular reason and that is because it's extremely high quality. So moving on from the actual heatsink and the cooler assembly itself, let's take a look at the NF9 PWM, Chromax Black Swap, just to get it technically correct. So as we open the box, very similar to what we saw with the NFA20, which is the 200mm one, which if you want, you can check that out up here. Just a shrunken down version of it essentially. So again, it's a 92mm fan, so it's 92 by 92 by 25, so standard 25mm height. And because it's a Chromax swap, you again get all those little rubber grommets to put in the top corners. So if you do want to swap it out and you don't want that completely stealth black look, you can add a little bit of color to it. So looking in the box, we get our Chromax accessory kit. And in there again, we get all the usual deal. So all of our multicolored caps to go on the corners of the fan. Again, same deal. So you get eight black ones, four of the colors. So you can only have the color on one side. If you want more of the color ones, you can actually reach out to Noctua and you can actually purchase them as a separate entity, but they don't come pre-included. So if you do want to see the same colors front and back of your fan, but obviously in this particular instance, because it's going to be mounted on top of a cooler, it's pointless. So. Uh, yeah, for this entire instance, it isn't necessary. But if you're thinking about putting maybe these into a 92 mil slot on your ITX build, or maybe in your PC chassis, maybe you can only get a 92 mil fan in there, then again, these are perfect for that as well. It isn't just for this cooler, it will fit in any 92 mil opening. So looking at the fan itself, the, this is a seven blade design. And because we've got that extra height on there, the blades have got a little bit more scoop to them. So they will pass through a little bit more air, which is uh, good, gives you a little bit more static pressure. Static pressure wise, I think this one's 2.28 against the standard one, which is about 2.01 thereabouts. So it's not a massive jump, but certainly is an improvement. Also RPM wise, you get a slightly lower RPM with this one against the stock one. So it all goes towards making it a little bit quieter and a little bit cooler. Again, depending on what processor you're using, then you may find this not necessary at all, but if you've got the height and you want to get it a little bit cooler, then definitely worth a look. This is about 15 pounds here in the UK at the moment, so if you do want to upgrade it, it's not a, a bank breaker. 15 pounds for a quality fan these days, I don't think is too extortionate. Although some of you on the budget end of the market may find it a little bit extreme. So looking at connectivity wise, we've got the usual deal. So we've got the PWM connector, which you can just unplug there, which is uh, all well and good. And again, because this is part of the Chromax family, you can replace these with the colored versions. So if you wanna match the rubber tags in the corners, then you can do that as well. Looking at the back of the fan, we've got the usual deal. So we've got the Chromax logo on there and some of the information about the power requirements, wattage, etc., etc. The actual frame of the fan, much like most of the Notcher fans, or use the advanced acoustic kind of surrounding. So it is designed so that it keeps it as quiet as physically possible. Even looking very closely at the sides of it, there's little sections which have been machined and also there's little kind of divots or dimples as well, which just help with airflow. And they designed it so that the turbulence from the outside going through to the turbulence on the outside is kind of evenly matched so you don't get any weird noises or that kind of chopping effect as you would with like a house fan or a desk fan. So going back to the uh, mountains on the corner, so 
with the little rubbers, all you need to do is just a friction fit and they just push in there. And there you go. There is your rubber mounting done. And again, you do get four of the colored ones and you get eight of the black ones. So both sides, etc., etc. When you're using it with the cooler air, again, obviously you're not going to want to have colored ones on the back because you're not going to see them. Well, it's unlikely you're going to see them. So it's absolutely fine. So I think that pretty much wraps this part up of actually introducing the equipment. So the next thing to do is actually go through the installation process of the cooler onto our system. And uh, yeah, and then we'll give it some testing. So here is our motherboard. So this is the B550M ITX-AC ASRock board. And as you can see processor-wise there, we've got our Ryzen 3. It's only a 2200G, but well, it's the best I've got at the moment. And there's basically nothing else really on the market that's kind of new enough for me to test with this. So, uh, and also that physically fits into this chassis. So it is what it is. Right, first of all, I've removed the uh, the two lugs, standard lugs, from the back plate. So all we want to do is to literally move it up, and we can remove this back plate. Don't need that anymore. So that leaves us with our motherboard and processor. Now, normally at this point, you'd put your back plate in position and start getting things ready. But actually, because it works in a different way, we need to do the top bit first. And actually, when we do the uh, the bottom bit, just to show you, that's the screws we use. And excuse the uh, thermal paste all over my fingers. So first thing to do is to uh, put a little bit of cooling paste on the processor. And it comes included with the kit. So you get the Ultra NTH1 thermal pasta. And we'll just put a little bit of that on the top there, just a little blob. At least that's what we'll attempt to do. Yeah, that should be absolutely fine. Now obviously you can apply the paste and do whatever you want. Uh, however it makes you feel happy in your life, go for it, do whatever you need to do. Uh, but I'm gonna go with it just like that. So the awkward part now is the fact that you have to actually line up the processor and the cooler with the actual unit. So straight down on roughly in line with where the holes are. And get a little bit of a squeeze down there just to make sure that it's uh, attached. So now what we need to do with the, uh, the cooler attached and it isn't a little bit wobbly. So what you've got to do now is carefully lift the whole thing up and flip it round onto its front. At which point, it's kind of slopping around. So now we'll just give it a little wiggle and we'll try and get it lined up. So if you look down through the holes in the motherboard, you should just about be able to see actually on that part of the camera, where are we there? You're just about to see the hole going down through. So next up is the mounting plate. So turn that upside down. So you've got your protective plastic section against the motherboard itself. Fits either way, so it doesn't really matter which way you do it. And then you can just drop these screws down into the hole. All four of them. And then all we need to do is tighten them up. So they should just go in. I might need to do a couple of screws just to start them off. If you feel any resistance, just unscrew it a little bit and uh, start again. Yeah, that's good. Just repeat that in all four corners. If you're not sure, just unscrew until you feel a notch. And then you can screw with confidence. That's it, we're done. So that's all the screws done up. So now we can flip it back round. And if we look at the board, it should all look very nice. And you see, we've got all of our clearance there. So again, you see where our PCI Express is there, it's nowhere near that. And if we flip round to this side, you see RAM clearance wise, absolutely fine, no problems at all. So even with the, uh, the tallest of RAM modules in there, it will be absolutely fine. So now all we need to do is to uh, connect up our 
CPU header, which is this one here. And if I try and remember which one it is actually on the board, CPU fan, it's this one up at the top. Which is probably not very visual for you guys. So there we go. That's that installed. And then we can kind of cable manage that right to the side after. Try and keep it away from the VRM section if at all possible. And actually, because of the layout of this, uh, the cooler and the fins, etc. So the fins on this side are going to blow directly at the RAM there. And on this side, the fins are going to blow straight out over those VRMs, which are going to keep the VRMs and the VRM cooler nice and clean, uh, cool rather. And then that heat is going to exhaust straight out the back somewhere, hopefully. At least you'd hope it would. Anyway, so let's get this back inside the PC and we can uh, do some testing. Okay, so we've done our testing and the results are in. And actually, it's done really, really well. Now, I was trying to compare it directly with some previous coolers, such as the stock one and also the Gelid, which uh, again, you can check out from the links up here. And I was looking through my notes and I'm struggling to get the information together. So I may update this with some PowerPoints or you may just see the exact information I'm giving you now. But essentially, yeah, it's done very, very well. It looks to be about 10 degrees less than the Gelid cooler and roughly about 20 to 25 degrees cooler than the stock AMD Wraith Stealth cooler, which in itself is pretty impressive. And the one thing I did notice is the weird thing, doing the upgrade, technical kind of upgrade, and using this fan actually got worse. The kind of the normal temperatures in normal ambient loads and also the lowest recorded temperatures were about the same across the two, about 26 degrees in a 22 degree ambient room on the Ryzen 3 2200G. But under load, this seemed to uh, give way a little bit. The noise profile was definitely better, but certainly it was a little bit hotter. So this was getting up to around about 69 degrees C under full load in Cinebench R23, and this was getting up to about 65 degrees. So a little bit of a difference, and the actual the stock cooler that comes with the fan is actually seemingly does better than this one. I'm pretty sure really this case fan is really a case fan and it doesn't do particularly well under that kind of intense load actually that close to a radiator or a, a cooling fin stack. So yeah, save yourself 15, 20 pounds and uh, yeah, just use the stock fan. So I'll quickly run through some of the results that we've got from this test in today. So this is in the Inwin B1, as you can see, with the glass top there. All we've got for ventilation is there's a fan on the side and we've got a small intake on the other side where the actual power supply has got an intake. So not a great deal of cooling going on in there and it is essentially other than that pretty sealed because you've got that glass top. So with the case open uh, with a stock configuration as it comes out of the box, so lowest temperature recorded, 26 degrees. The highest temperature recorded was 60 degrees C and the Cinebench 23 score was 3449. Then we did the same test again, exactly the same, but then we just put the lid back on the case. So in a kind of restricted format, uh, again, same test. So the lowest recorded temperature, 31 degrees C, so about five degrees difference. The highest temperature was 65 degrees C, which again, five degrees. So that means that there isn't any issue with the cooler itself. It's purely the restriction, both ambient temperatures and also the restrictions giving you five degrees extra at the low point and the high point so the cooler is performing as it should do. Cinebench score for that one, Cinebench uh, R23 is 3457 so a, uh, a slight increase there but that is certainly within margin of error. So next up was the tests with the larger fan, the 25 mil fan. So again with the case with the lid taken off we've got loads of 26 degrees C, the high temperature was 60 degrees C, so again, exactly the same in the open configuration. We've got a Cinebench score of 3470, so about 30 points up on the previous score. Well, actually around about 20 points higher, so kind of, again, margin of error territory, but again, slightly better. I did notice with it in the open configuration, some of the boost clocks were slightly higher, but again, it is within that margin of error. Uh, with the case with this fan on that cooler, with the lid on, in this restricted state, so the lowest temperature recorded was 31 degrees C, which is basically exactly the same as what we had with the other fan, and the highest temperature recorded was 68 degrees, meaning that was three degrees higher than the stock configuration, which yeah was a little bit weird. And the Cinebench R23 score of 3,440 points, so actually the lowest of the lot. 
which again was a little bit weird. So I did rerun the test just to make sure it's not something doing weird. Uh, I actually remounted the fan and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, the results were pretty much identical. So it does seem in this particular chassis with this setup as it is, the Noctua NHL 9A actually does work best in this configuration. So leave the fan as it is. No point spending extra money on an extra fan. You definitely don't need it. And if I look back at my prior results, so with the stock cooler, our minimum temperature recorded was 31 degrees C. So that compares, yep, pretty much almost exactly the same with it closed and maximum was 91 degrees C. So yeah, that's a, a definite drop, almost 30 degrees there. The gel had actually done pretty well at about 76 degrees under the full load. Whereas we didn't get over what 65 realistically with the case closed. So 65, yeah, about 10 degrees better than the gel So that's done pretty well. The tests are done, I've made more results. Definitely as far as uh, M4 Mini ITX style coolers go, this in a moment is the uh, definitely the one to beat. So I think that's gonna pretty much wrap this one up. Obviously, if you wanna get hold of one of these, then I will put some affiliated links in the video description. And if you wanna ask any comments or questions, you know where to put them. But in the meantime, I think that's gonna be it. I'm Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.